Hello and welcome to Alan History Nerd. In this video, I'm going to be looking at how you use socialist key thinkers in a socialist ideology essay on um, paper one or component one. Now, the socialist key thinkers we need to look at are Marx and Engels, Beatrice Webb, Rosa Luxemburg, Anthony Crossland and Anthony Giddens. So socialism seems to be a, a bit special where we get six rather than five. But Marx and Engels, essentially, they, they, they treat as a, um, a single uh, think of by combining their works as, as they often um, work together. So there are already on um, my uh, on my channel on my uh, various uh, politics playlists. There's a series of videos that go through um, the different socialist thinkers and kind of outline that look at the different types of socialism. Uh, they look at socialist ideas on 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 human nature and society and economy and on state. But this is kind of the, the final stage, really, is to, is to help you to see how you bring these key thinkers in and you use them as part of your essay. Because AO1 uh, on the uh, on the ideologies essay is based on your uh, your ability to draw um, draw knowledge and, and ex make, give explanation of the views of these different key thinkers. Uh, and the AO2 and AO3 stuff is based on your ability to compare their views and to reach judgments. So th this is a really important part of writing an effective essay. Now, again, on my channel already, there there is a video on exactly how to construct these 24, uh, 24 mark essays. So looking at AO1, uh, the comparison stuff of, of AO2 uh, and the judgment of AO3. So. Uh, You've got to use at least three of these key thinkers in any essay. And the questions can focus on human nature, society, economy of the state, or a, a broader comparison uh, between the different types of socialism. And I've done a similar video uh, to this on liberalism, and there will be also them coming if they aren't already there by the time you watch this on conservatism and nationalism. Some of the comments I get on the channel suggest that I'm missing out kind of a key and important socialist socialism, different types of socialism and different socialist thinkers. The reason is this is uh, clearly is designed for A-level politics and I'm focusing on the key thinkers that they pick out and the types of socialism uh, that they pick out. Obviously there are far more socialist thinkers than I will go into and there are a wider a wider range and, and intricate different types of socialism which disagree and agree with each other in different ways. But I'm going to focus on um, the, the key thinkers actually given in the spec and what I'm going to go through first is I'm going to go through what the spec says that you need to know in terms of the ideas of these key thinkers. Now, obviously, you can go beyond these, but these are the the, the, the very kind of um, basic building blocks that they set out. So in terms of revolutionary socialism, we, we first of all, we got Karl Marx and, and uh, Frederick Engels uh, and the spec tells us you need to know the centrality of social class, the ideas of historical materialism, dialectic change and revolutionary class consciousness. And also as humans, as social beings, how nature is socially determined and how true common humanity can be expressed only under communism. So, again, some uh, lots of complex ideas in there. Uh, and it, with the, we've got this idea that things are, are driven by uh, the, um, the economic um, system that is in place and that change is inevitable, essentially. Uh, and the, that, that there will be a revolution to overthrow capitalism and this will come through the growth of class consciousness amongst the, the, uh, the working classes uh, and, and the different epochs and things that Marx talks about, the, the different stages in history uh, that every society will go through. And this idea that there's an innate kind of human nature that is fraternal and altruistic and that this this will only be returned to once proper communism is established and that, that systems such as capitalism corrupt um, human nature. Uh, but the humans are individualistic and, 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 and bent on, on competition, as uh, people we believe in other uh, ideas would suggest. 
Uh, another uh, revolutionary socialist um, that is looked at by the spec is Rosa Luxemburg, 1871 to 1919. Uh, and she says that evolutionary socialism and revision, revisionism is not possible as capitalism is based on economic a relationship of exploitation. So the, the workers are always going to be exploited by the capitalists and the bourgeois classes. And, and therefore, you can't just slowly evolve that away. And, and so she's responding to the um, evolutionary um, socialists who were responding to the ideas of Marx. And, and she's kind of going, well, actually, you know, the, the, we can't we have to do this through revolution. Um, and she talks about struggle for the proletariat for reform and democracy. Uh, and this creates class consciousness necessary uh, to overthrow uh, a capitalist society and state. Um, and her ideas are different to, in some ways, though close in, in many others, to the ideas of Marx and Engels. And also one of the, way, one of the big contrasts of, of the writing of Rosenberg, uh, he, he, Rosa Luxemburg, is, is with uh, the ideas of um, Lenin and, and Leninist Marxism, which comes at, at about the same time, uh, obviously with the, the Russian Revolution in, in 1917. So Luxembourg actually envisaged after the revolution, she actually envisaged at that point a degree of democracy. Um, so not the, the dictatorship of the proletariat, uh, as, as we would see uh, with Marx and Engels. Now, with um, the social democrats, um, the form of evolutionary socialism we see on the spec, so it, it would cause this this bit social democracy. This always causes me an initial bit of um, confusion because, in my mind, Beatrice Webb is not a social democrat; she's a democratic socialist. These are fundamentally different. Um, so, a social democrat essentially believes in in in. Uh, the fundamentals that you can maintain a capitalist system whilst a, a, a democratic socialist wants to achieve the same as a revolutionary socialist just without the revolution and, and so democratic socialism is further to the left and is more radical than social democracy which is is more modern it's, it tends to be what we see primarily um, um, in, in the post-war labor governments now Webb uh, talks about the inevitability of gradualness, so the gradualist parliamentary strategy for achieving evolutionary socialism. So essentially the, the, the working classes as the largest group are going to vote for a socialist party. The socialist party can implement over time as, as people see the benefits of socialism, more and more people will vote for it and eventually it becomes completely dominant. And essentially you end up with a socialist state, but you don't need the big bloody revolution, um, as you would see under Marx, Engels or, or, or Luxembourg. Um, and she said that the expansion of the state, that is not the overthrow of the state, is critical uh, to delivering socialism. So Anthony Crossland, and Anthony Crossland, I, I would say, is definitively a social democrat. And, and Anthony Crossland of uh, 1918 to 1977. Uh, and he talks about the inherent contradictions in capitalism. Uh, it does not drive uh, social change. Uh, and But he also says that, that managed capitalism can deliver social justice and, and equality. So we're seeing here a shift. So there's a shift between uh, Webb and Crossland, which talks about the fact that um, capitalism is acceptable. It, it has to be managed. It has to be altered in some, to some extent, but it, it, it is acceptable. And he's then wrote about state managed capitalism and it's including a mixed economy, um, Keynesian ideas such as full employment uh, and universal social benefits. So Crossland's um, social democracy, when he was in the Labour Party, he was a key figure in the Labour Party, should remind you of kind of Labour politics in the UK as a form of socialism. The final type of socialism that, that is looked at in the spec is the third way. Now, there is a big argument about this, and I'm, I'm sure this one is one that people will have um, in classrooms and, and um, in discussions with other people, it, it is whether the third way is in the right place. Now, Anthony Giddens, who um, was born in 1938, he is the kind of the architect of the third way, and, and, and he argues that it is a form of socialism. Um, many of you may have differing um, views on that, and we can see in the picture above me, we can see uh, Giddens talking to Blair, and, and, and Blair uh, was one of the key politicians who followed this idea of the third way, and, and in this we see him changing the Labour Party and the, creation and the movement to in new Labour and a different form of policies and the changes to Clause 4. So um, across our, our thinkers, we've got Beatrice Webb, who, who was fundamental in the writing of Clause 4, and we, we've got 
we've got Giddens, whose ideas influence Blair, who then alters Clause 4. And Clause 4 in, in the Labour Party uh, constitution is, is the key bit that, that uh, always committed it to socialism, to, to public ownership. So Giddens in the third way, he talks about the rejection of state intervention and the acceptance of free market in the economy. So it's accepting free market capitalism, neoliberalism, as it were. So the emphasis on equality of opportunity over equality uh, or equality of outcome. And so um, we, we really are kind of seeing a step towards um, modern liberalism, I think, rather strongly here. Uh, and, and and we talk about responsibility and community and community over class conflict. So class conflict, which is a key element uh, of Marxism uh, and, and and democratic socialism, uh, as well as all the revolutionary socialism, is, is not a key part of the third way. And, and Giddin said the role of the state is social investment in infrastructure and, edu and, and education, not in economic and social engineering. So it's not about creating a, an equal society. It, it's about giving everybody a good and equal chance. It's, it's, kind of, it's creating the infrastructure in which people can thrive. Now there's an idea of collective and um, and, and people working together to achieve this. And, and therefore Giddin's argues again, this is a, a form of socialism. As I said, not everybody would agree. Now the good news whether you, whether you think it is or not, is it is really quite radically different um, from particularly revolutionary socialist ideas, but also arguably from either even the ideas of, of Webb and Crossland. Uh, and therefore, when it comes to writing your differ paragraphs in, in a, um, a 24 Mark Ideas essay on, on socialism, then you, you're going to find it easier to do this because the ideas of Giddens are going to clash with the ideas of Marx and most of the others as well. And so you've got that possibility. Now, there are some threads where you can pull it together, but actually, because you're going to be doing, they agree, they disagree, this this range in socialism means that the, the disagree bits actually are, are easier, I think, than, than in um, some of the other ideologies. The counter to that is, is sometimes finding the central threads and the agreement bit can be a little bit tougher. So I'm going to go through um, different parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to do areas where socialists um, agree uh, and areas where socialists disagree based around the, the key themes. So the key themes are, are human nature, uh, society, economy and state. And so I'm going to essentially go through eight things. So I'm going to do one on each side. And when I'm doing where they agree, you'll see the uh, me jumping in the air and shouting yes. Uh, and when they disagree, you'll see me holding a big no sign. Uh, and so what I've tried to do is I've tried to create kind of like model paragraphs or, or model approaches of how you would do this. Obviously, my answers in all paragraphs here are limited because they are limited by space because I wanted to do it so you could read it on a, a, on a, um, a device or phone or computer, or whatever it is, and without making it mind blowingly small. So I in, in again, if you were writing this in an exam or in a, a, an essay for your teacher, you would want to expand on some of the stuff that I've put in here and added some more examples and stuff. But I'm, I'm a bit limited um, by space. So to what extent do socialists differ regarding their views on human nature? And so this one I'm doing an agree paragraph. So human nature, according to socialists, is plastic and shaped by a person's experiences and the society they live in. This can be seen in the writings of Marx and Engels, who write about the positives of human nature, fraternity, altruism and cooperation, and how they are damaged by false consciousness of bourgeois values. And again, if I had more room, I would go on and explain that in the only in pure communism, the final stages of um, revolutionary socialism, the, the, the Marx and Engels argue that, that actually true human nature can come out. Similarly, Giddens, who promotes the third way, says that human nature is shaped by socioeconomic conditions, and this alters the nat natural instincts uh, that are to cooperate and seek fairness. So we, we can see there are threads even with these two normally fundamentally opposed ideas in socialism, we can see an idea of agreement. Fundamentally, therefore, socialists from revolutionary to the third way agree on a positive, instinctive human nature that is altered or moulded by society. Giddens and Marx, however, would not agree on what should be done because of this. 
So again, I've do, I, this is an agreement thing, but I, one of the things you have to be really careful with is you can't be completely um, black and white with it. You can't go, well, absolutely, they completely agree and then do a paragraph going, they completely disagree. So you have to sh show that it's moderated away. One of the, the, the words that I use with my students a lot is this word nuance. You have to show a nuanced understanding. So there are bits that on which there is a, a thread of agreement, but it's not absolute agreement. Oh, and this, 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 we'll see the same with, with differences uh, as well. So hopefully a good bit in there where you can see I, I've presented the ideas of, of the uh, of the 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 two um, or three thinkers. I, I've contract. I've I've looked at how they agree. There's a, a, a some beginning of some some building on that into some judgment in terms of the the degree of agreement um, that would be a, a kind of AO3 bit. So the knowledge is in there, which is AO1. There's some comparison, which is AO2, and there's a beginning of a part of a judgment. Again, all of this would in a perfect uh, perfect answer would be expanded on in a bit more detail. So the other side of this, and to show that they um, that they differ. So socialists disagree about the damage done to human nature by living in a capitalist society. Uh, Luxembourg did not believe that that the damage was as bad as Marx and Engels suggested. She argued that fraternity and altruism continues in working class communities despite of capitalism. Webb takes this argument further, suggesting that a violent revolution, as promoted by revolutionary socialists, would do more damage than good to human nature. And instead, a gradual move towards instinctive human nature was needed. So obviously, Marx and Engels, they they are revolutionary. Luxembourg is revolutionary. So they, they say, ultimately, we, they need to get to this stage of communism. They have to completely um, get rid of capitalism to, to reach this kind of ideal of human nature, return to the, to the kind of natural form of human nature. Uh, whilst Luxembourg is arguing that it hasn't been completely wiped out um, by capitalism, whilst Marx is saying that it has, and then Webb is going on to say, well, actually, we need to gradually build, move towards it. We don't. The nasty shock of a revolution is actually going to have a, a retrograde impact uh, on human nature rather than a positive one. Uh, this demonstrates that socialists, uh, though agreeing that capitalism damages human nature, disagree on the extent of the damage and the best way to restore true human nature. So again, we've got knowledge. In fact, we've got Marx and Engels, we've got Luxembourg and we've got Webb. We've got the knowledge bit in there. There is comparison in there, which is AO2. And then that last sentence, there is a degree of judgment and it's showing nuanced understanding. And that would be part of your, your AO3 mark going through. Now, the next bit I'm going to look at is um, society. Uh, and again, so we're, we're looking at a degree of agreement. So to, to what extent do socialists agree about the nature of society? For socialists, class and class conflicts are important in explaining the nature of society. For Marx and Engels, a capitalist society is fatally flawed and will inevitably lead to class conflict. They believe that ultimately there can be a communist society that will see an end to this conflict that is rooted in the economic system of capitalism. Luxembourg agrees that class conflict within society will lead to revolutionary change. Webb agrees that working classes are repressed and exploited by capitalist society in a society. Marx, Engels, Luxembourg and Webb therefore all agree that capitalist societies create dam damaging class conflict and these societies must be changed. And again, if I'm going to bring in a bit more nuance, I could disagree. So they disagree about how they should be changed and all that kind of stuff that we that, that means that we could get a central argument flowing through, even though we've got an agree paragraph and a disagree paragraph at this point. But again, there is comparison in this point, picking out agreement. There is a um, uh, there is, is knowledge of, of the different uh, key thinkers and their ideas. And we're trying to to build a kind of judgment in there as well, which is AO3. So then we've got our, our differ one on society. So not all socialists accept Marx's theories regarding social class and class conflict in capitalist societies. Crossland wrote of the increasing complexities of class as new classes emerge, such as the meritocratic managers and classless technocrats. So it's quite technical that bit. I mean, this is so meritocratic managers is people who kind of so their, their class background would be no different to some of the people they are managing, but they have risen up on their own merit into a managerial position. So they weren't born into the managerial class, but have progressed up through promotions, hard work, education, whatever, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, and the classless technocrats, it, he's, he's talking about um, 
your skilled laborers in a, a, a in a modern society who who work with new technology and things like that and again this isn't something these aren't jobs which are kind of class based they're based on on particular knowledge and particular um skills and so they aren't they aren't in the particular position of the 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 worker who is being controlled on there and they aren't in the position of the um of the manager who does the controlling they, they kind of they sit somewhere outside of that that they they're people who often are very highly paid and very highly valued but they they don't know they don't fit perfectly into in, into the old kind of marxist views that are, are of your kind of bourgeois and your proletariat because as, as Croston would argue the world has got more complicated in in, in modern uh, economics and therefore the, we don't get quite the same distinction uh, these complexities mean that capitalism won't drive social change as Marx envisioned, because obviously with Marx is, is, is based on, on class conflict between these two overriding classes. Uh, and if you've got people who would kind of fit a bit in both or don't fit in either, then, then we're not going to get that same idea. Uh, Crossland therefore dismisses the Marxist idea that capitalist society is inherently doomed to fail uh, and, uh, and will lead uh, to a revolution that will upturn uh, the social order. So in this, we, we've we looked at the idea of two key thinkers, Marx, again, again, if I had more space, I, I'd write Marx and Engels more than I have done, but I get kind of really limited for room. Um, so Marx and Engels idea, and we're contrasting them with, with Crossland and, and showing that when it comes to ideas of class and class conflict, that they fundamentally um, disagree on, on the impact this is having. And there's an interesting kind of I, a bit you can get into in terms of the history of this is, is that they're writing about 100 years apart. Uh, and and so uh, fundamentally, uh, they're, they're writing about different worlds, uh, and that 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 can explain some of that difference. Next, we're going to move on to the economy. Obviously, fundamentally, this is, this is is arguably the most important part for socialists. Uh, and there's lots of different questions you can get on this, and some of them might be to what extent they differ uh, regarding the economy. You, you, there have been past papers that focus more on things like capitalism, but again, the, same, the arguments all kind of come out the same. So, in terms of um, areas that uh, they agree on, in terms of the economy, so the majority of socialists agree that capitalism is inherently a bad economic system that leads to inequality and exploitation. All argue that unrestricted capitalism is flawed uh, and an economic system that promotes greater equality would be better. Marx and Engels argued that capitalism is inefficient and will ultimately lead to its own destruction. Luxembourg agreed that it should be destroyed, but didn't see this destruction uh, as inevitable. It, it, she, and again, you, she, she explained that they, they need better organisation and, and, and actually a greater effort from the working classes to do it. It wasn't just eventually going to happen. Uh, Webb argued that capitalism should be gradually replaced by a socialist economy uh, based on common ownership. Marx, Luxembourg and Webb all wanted to see capitalism removed and replaced with a more efficient and equitable socialist economy based on shared rather than private ownership. So again, we've gone through the stages. Uh, we've shown understanding of, of, of the different um, key thinkers' ideas. Uh, we've shown th this idea of comparison of the, the, where they agree. So that's building our AO2 score. And we've got, again, in this, this final sentence, we've got a, a bit of AO3, we've got a, a, bit, a bit of judgment. Uh, and, and we're talking about um, the degree of agreement. And this could all then fit into a broader argument, depending on what um, what exactly the question was. Moving on, we've got this one. Uh, to what extent do socialists differ regarding the economy? And this time we're saying that they 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 differ, that they they don't agree. So not all socialists agree that capitalism must be completely removed and public ownership must replace private ownership, as Marx, Engels, and Webb suggest. Crossland argues for a mixed economy in which capitalism continues to play a role, but is managed under the principles of Keynesian economics. Again, if I had more space, I'd go on and explain the ideas of Keynesian uh, economics with the ideas of full employment and the, um, the, the economy being managed to avoid the, uh, the boom and bust and, and the, 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 the government can in, will invest to ensure that people got work and, all, uh, and protect and, and look after industries that were failing if it was, uh, there was a wider economic benefits and things like that. And runs alongside public ownership uh, of some key industries and again i give examples of how that's worked for example in britain and and, and the kind of industries that have been uh, under public ownership 
Crossan argued this was the best route to financing public services and achieving greater equality. Giddens goes even further, uh, fully rejecting the idea of public ownership and regulation of the economy, instead focusing on taxation to fund public services such as education to increase equality. And again, on the good ones with, these, with Giddens is you could then bring in policies and things um, from uh, the uh, the third way uh, and done by the by the new Labour government under Blair. And so you you could talk about the changing uh, of um, clause four. You could talk about uh, funding in education, you could talk about things like EMA, uh, the education maintenance allowance, was, which was done to kind of uh, keep more disadvantaged students in, in, in sixth form and, and, and the expansion of university places. So you could talk about all those kind of things and, and whilst there was no renationalisation of, of, of um, key utilities or anything like that uh, under new labour. So again, all the different aspects, AO1, AO2 and AO3, uh, and showing that degree of difference. And again, this could be in a, a, a straight economy question. This could be a, a to what extent do socialists agree on capitalism essay. The next bit is on the state. So key socialist thinkers agree on the need for the expansion of the state. Webb argued that the expansion of the state is critical in delivering socialism uh, and that the state should be built up over time. Uh, this is similar to the argument of Crossland, who wanted a large state that could carry out state managed capitalism, striving for employment and a universal social benefits. Here we see the view of the state presented uh, amongst democratic socialists and social democrats. And although revolutionary socialists and followers of the third way would not agree with this vision, both would see the role of the state increase in some way. And again, if you've got if I've got more space, you can explain Well, revolutionary socialists are going to talk about some kind of um, uh, some kind of stage of, of, of state socialism or dictatorship of the proletariat, whilst the third way is going to see an, an expanding role in terms of public services um, in promoting equality of opportunity. So we've got this idea that you can build of a, a big state um, as an idea uh, under socialism. On the other hand, we can then look at, at, at differences. So Giddens argument that the role of the state is, is social in investment, infrastructure and education, not economic uh, and social engineering differs greatly from the view of other socialist thinkers. Marx, Engels and Luxembourg all call for the destruction of the capitalist state. So again, they, they, we're showing a real disagreement on, the, on the, the idea of what should happen to the state when we've got some thinkers saying it should be destroyed and other thinkers saying it should be maintained. Um, Marx and Engels argued the next stage would be a dictation of the proletariat, which would be an extensive and powerful sexual state. This differs greatly from Gideon's state, which would not seek to control and fundamentally change society. Ultimately, Marxism argues that the state would fundamentally change society, achieving communism, and eventually the state would fade away completely. Giddens and other socialists don't share this belief. So again, we can the, the the form of socialism, revolutionary socialism, which has generally led to the biggest and most all encompassing and all all powerful states, are actually ultimately in the ideology behind it from Marx and Engels, talks about a stateless society where, where there is no need for the state, that it fades away, it's not needed anymore once true human nature ha has been um, be, been rediscovered, reignited and, and fully accepted. And then you don't need the state telling people to do it anymore. Now, the other socialists don't agree that this ultimately can it will be achieved, that the, the, the state will always have to be playing some kind of role. And therefore, that, that, that association with socialism uh, and the big state. Now, Giddens' state, if you have, again, more room, it's, it's Giddens' state is going to be smaller than um, Crossland state, which is going to be smaller than Webb state, um, which is going to be different um, to uh, Luxembourg state. So th th there is a lot more you could get into in terms of um, differences on that. But again, we've got here some of the key elements, AO1, AO2 uh, and some AO3 uh, in there as well. So the types of questions could be very much like the ones that I, I've looked at. So on those key themes, human nature, society, economy and state, um, they could pick out an aspect of one of these. So in, out of society, they might pick class. Um, out of uh, economy, they might pick capitalism. 
Uh, it could get you to contrast the different types of socialism. So the, the ones that are named on the spec are revolutionary social democracy in the third way. So they shouldn't really ask you to compare a different type of socialism, though there are very many of them. And again, you, you may think you've not covered my favourite one in this video. And the reason why I haven't is because it's not on the spec. And this is what we're very much doing is looking at writing effective essays on this. Um, you should also look out for words in, in your questions such as evolutionary socialism or revisionist socialism. So the revolutionary would contrast with the evolutionary and um, and revisionist. So so Webb is an evolutionary even evolutionary socialist as as um, you could argue is Cross and Crossland and Giddens would also fit into the idea of um, revisionist socialism. Um, so there are different ways that they could look at it, but essentially if you can write effectively on socialism, on ways that it differs and ways that it agrees and finding, a, again, a broader range than I've looked at, building on the level of detail that I've done, um, then you should be able to answer any of the questions that they can throw at you in that final exam and any ones that you are, are practicing um, either with me, if you're in my, one of my groups, or if you're learning politics elsewhere. I hope that's been uh, helpful for you. Again, just to remind you that there is on the Allen History Nerd channel, there are loads and loads of politics videos. I think there's uh, well over 150 of them now. And I go through the entire spec, uh, as in the spec that I teach. So that's component one, uh, component two, and the, the, the non-core ideology I do is nationalism. And then in, in, in so in, in component two, and then in, in I do component three A, I do the, the US option. So you'll find videos on all the stuff from components one, two, and three on my channel. It's also broken up. So there is a playlist on the different components and there's a, actually a separate playlist uh, on all the ideology stuff. So, and if you need all the, all the bits on all the, there's lots of stuff on exam technique and all different things. There is also a plethora of history as the name of the channel would suggest, history topics, um, different ones that I teach and I'm interested in. So again, um, if you're doing uh, A-level history or you just like history, there might be some other stuff on there for you as well. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, then please hit like. Uh, any comments, um, uh, please, if, if you're still struggling with these types of questions, things like that, ask below. If you haven't done also done already, then please do subscribe, get notifications as I add more videos and make it easier to find all the lovely stuff on here to help you with your exams. Thank you very much for watching.